a lot of people always ask me to prescribe them finasterides, so to block the DHT to fight their male pattern hair loss. So um, why don't you recommend finasteride? So um, we talked about this, I think, in another video where I kind of went over it, and I will try to get everybody a paper. It's a really good one out of a urology group in Boston where they looked at the 5-alpha reductase enzyme and what it does. So not just the benefits, you know, DHT has, I mean, we, we make it for a reason, right? Uh, for the more androgenic uh, hormone compared to testosterone, um, helps penile health, helps well-being, central nervous system drive. So not only that, but 5-alpha reductase is very prominent in the brain and converts other chemicals to neurosteroids that we need. So it doesn't just work on testosterone. Well, when you, it's just like an aromatase inhibitor, right? When you block it, you block it everywhere. You're not selecting to block it in the hair follicle. You're blocking it in the brain and the penis and the muscle. I mean, it doesn't convert in the muscle of DHT, but other places where you do. So to me, it's just simple. I mean, the body was designed the way it is for a reason. We make the hormones we do and the metabolites we do for a reason. And when people do these kind of things like block estradiol or block aromatization, or they block 5-alpha reductase, it's like, my example would be like taking out an anthill with a nuke. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. The collateral damage is worse than the benefit. Um, so that's the gist of it. There's, you know, guys, you can talk to guys all over the place that have taken finasteride. Not every guy gets side effects, but I would say a majority gets some kind of negative side effects, whether it's drop in libido, erectile dysfunction. There's links to depression. There's links to men on 5-alpha uh, reductase inhibitors with higher prevalence of type 2 diabetes, worsening insulin resistance. I mean, some of those are association studies, obviously, but it makes sense from a metabolic standpoint. When you start blocking these things that we need, you're going to see metabolic consequences. And not only that, just the way you feel. And some guys, unfortunately, do have post-finasteride syndrome, where when they, when they come off finasteride, even if it's a small dose like Propecia for their hair, they, the side effects don't go away. And that's a really hard thing to deal with. So... I just, I think guys need to explore other options before they go that route. I don't really prescribe finasteride to my patients, even though that's a big one in the urology world to shrink the prostate. It doesn't shrink it that much. I mean, if, if a guy's to the point where he's maxed out on BPH medications that aren't finasteride or dutasteride and he still really can't urinate, he's probably at the point where he needs a surgery. Um, Giving somebody a medicine like that, which is going to worsen their overall health and their well-being to me is just not it's not being a good practitioner. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have any experience with it, Gil? Uh, just like Jordan said, I'm not a fan of blocking any metabolite of a hormone. Uh, you know, there are some hormones that are not endocrine hormones, and there's a reason that we have to have an endocrine hormone as the basis to produce these via an enzymatic reaction. And when you block that enzyme, it would be no different than castrating someone for the sake of removing testosterone. And obviously we wouldn't do that. So, why are we going to take the benefit of metabolites like estradiol and DHT and, and negate them? There are specific tissues that require them. And when you block them systemically for the sake of potentially preventing one aspect, then you are harming your health. And uh, I don't necessarily believe that elevated DHT leads to hair loss. Again, if you have the male pattern baldness gene at the very best, it's only going to possibly accelerate the inevitable. It's not going to take someone who's not susceptible to hair loss and cause hair loss. And we know this from case study after case study. And I believe Jordan and myself are living examples of this, of years of androgen and sufficient DHT and, you know, not, not a strand lost. So I think that it's, uh, it's overkill. It just, it's not necessary. I, I totally agree with everything you said. The, um, you know, and this goes to, I haven't looked in the studies on hair follicles, if they've ever measured um, DHT levels in the follicle on um, people who lose hair versus people who don't, but they have done this in the prostate and there's no difference in men with enlarged prostate versus normal size prostate. The prostate maintains its own intraprostatic DHT levels. So it's not the DHT alone that's causing it. Now, yes, if you remove DHT, you're withdrawing a substance that those tissues rely on, but it's, it's not a it's not a both ways kind of thing. It's just like people used to think, oh, we castrate men, it'll shrink their prostate cancer. So therefore, if we give them a testosterone, 
it'll make it grow. It doesn't work like that. And it's the same thing with THT, estradiol, you know, in breast cancer, if you remove a hormone from a tissue that is hormonal, of course it will do something to those cells, but giving extra doesn't do the opposite effect. And that's where I think people get tripped up. And, and the fact that medicine has pushed that, it's just really poor logic, honestly. Jordan, I'm curious, would, would a biopsy allow for testing of uh, intraprostatic DHT specifically? I don't know how they do. I mean, not a, I don't know what technique they use. That's, I mean, I'd have to look at that paper that I have and I need to pull up the full one to see the methods and what kind of biopsy. I mean, they, they are taking biopsies, but how they actually, is, is it what specific needle and what location of the prostate? I can't remember. But when um, they do check uh, tissue level, I mean, the prosthetic DHT tends to be significantly far greater than serum, right? Yes. Um, I'm trying to remember the paper, though. It was really interesting. They were showing how intraprostatic DHT did not change regardless of serum testosterone, which just goes to, sorry, I'm taking my socks off, uh, which just goes to the point of what's called the intracrine hormone, which we talk about all the time with estradiol and DHT. It's the exact same mechanism. Those hormones are made in specific tissues dependent on how much 5 alpha reductase or aromatase is in those tissues. So you can keep slamming a guy with testosterone and that it's already saturated his prostate at low levels. He's not going to make excess DHT if you're increasing the T. And it's the same thing with estradiol. So. And would the DHT blocking shampoo be effective and safe? I don't have a lot of experience with it just because I don't deal with hair loss, honestly, as a oh. urologist. What do you think? Even, I, I believe you've been using a DHT blocking shampoo for the last 10 years and the results speak for themselves. No, I'm only <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't believe in it. And um, yeah, I can't imagine uh, the shampoo or whatever is in it, the DHT blocker entering deep enough into the hair follicle. This is, this is an interesting question that I think should be re-asked in a way of what is a localized uh, shampoo for an enzyme inhibition? Let's look at it this way. If you're going to apply something to the scalp, in essence, the only way it's going to get into your body is via transdermal Fusion. And if that happens, we know it gets into systemic circulation, which is the same as a transdermal application of any hormone. So how is a localized effect going to be inhibited from circulating and having a systemic effect? It's not. There's papers on that actually showing you still get a significant um, DHT blocking effect, even if you just do topical. And systemically, it still does affect you. So it could be enough to cause side effects or problems. So you're probably better off with something that's not a hormonal topical compound or guys. I mean, I hate to say, except that they're going to go bald. I mean, there's obviously ways, you know, to fix that that aren't hormonal or whatever, but um, some guys do have to accept that fact. So, Hey, thank you for watching and do this next. Watch one of these videos to learn a ton more about hormone optimization.